Hello guys, this is my first lecture on Siglet Reinforced Beam by Limit State Method. So in this lecture, I'll be talking about basic theory about singly reinforced beam and the design parameters which will be useful in while designing singly reinforced beam. So first, uh, we'll go through the types of di different methods of design of concrete concrete structures. We have working stress method, we have limit state method, and we have ultimate load method so in my lecture in this design of reinforced concrete structures i'll be taking only limited method in at the end of and at the end of course i'll be explaining what exactly is your ultimate stress method and your working stress method so by now we are focusing only on limit state method so now now come to that uh, singly reinforced beam singly reinforced in a singly reinforced beam Singly reinforces reinforced simply supported beams or slab. The reinforcing steel bars are placed near or slabs where they are most effective in resisting the tensile stress. So as we know, if if we'll if we'll see that uh, if we'll if we if we'll see the beam, this is a beam, simply supported beam. So if we'll see that. So apply this load is here. So if this load is is acting this way, then the top fiber, this is the top fiber, this is the top fiber, this will be under compression and this bottom fiber will be under tension. So concrete being good in compression, we don't need to take think about this compression forces concrete will take care of that compressive forces but for tension concrete is a brittle material so it can now it can only take a very very less amount of tension so for to, to take care of the tension tensile force reinforcement bar are provided in a concrete structure so thus steel bars are placed near the bottom of the beam or slabs where they are most effective in resisting tensile stresses since tensile, this is the tension zone, so reinforcement are provided in this zone. So, to the next slide, we'll go to the next slide. So, this this slide we can see a singly support, simply supported beam. The tensile reinforcement is provided in the bottom part that is tension tension zone uh, this is the cross section of your cross section of your beam in the bottom zone and this is your width of the beam this is the overall depth of the beam which is denoted by capital d these terms we will be these these terms we will be using in our design problems what is your effective depth what is your overall depth this is your overall depth effective depth is your overall depth minus your clear cover which is your clear cover so previous the previous slide was for simply supported beam but if you if you see in a if you observe in a cantilever beam you see that the topmost fiber is in tension why this is in tension because if you apply the load apply the load from the top in this if you will apply the load the bending moment will be like the deflective sh um, deflected shape will be like this so the tension will be in the so we have provided the tension reinforcement in the bottom zone that is tension zone but in the cantilever beam you will find it opposite because the deflected shape is this way so the bottom fiber will be under and your top fiber will be under tension therefore in cantilever beam we provide the reinforcement that is tensile reinforcement in the top fiber this this will be your tension zone and this will be your compression zone hope you got this next we'll move to the stress block parameters so for a simply supported rectangular beam we have these these things in a cross section of a beam your width of the beam your depth of the beam here i have written it small d but this is not small d this should be 
your overall depth small d is your effective depth so don't get con confused this is your capital d it is a mistake in this slide so you can correct it this is capital d and this this part is your this part is your effective this is part is your clear cover effective cover or clear cover so your small d will be your overall depth minus your clear cover this is your strain strain block strain block this part is your under tension so that is tense tensile strain this is your compressive strain now comes your stress block uh, then this is your compression zone this is your tension zone this this is your z which is your lever arm this is your x x u is your neutral axis your neutral axis is your depth of neutral axis this is depth of neutral axis b is width of the section d is your effective depth of the section so here i have made a mistake this will be up to this d will be up to this depth effective depth so the depth of the neutral axis can be obtained by considering the equilibrium of the normal forces that is that your compression should be equal to ten tension so the force of compress compression should be equal to the force of tension so we have compressive force that is 0.36 f ck bx your f is stress b is your width x is your neutral axis x is your neutral axis that is depth of your compression zone if you'll observe in this slide look this is your x this is your neutral axis so b b into x is your area and this is your stress and this is your factor so this is your compressive force this is your tensile force tensile force is again your stress into area it is area of steel so we will use uh, this in place of at we will use ast for design purpose so the st st denotes steel so your 0.87 fi ast so your xu xu your x neutral axis this is your 0.87 fck fy 80 1.36 fck b next is your the lever arm so to calculate moment we need a lever arm a lever, a lever arm is nothing but the distance between the lines of action of two forces that is your compression and tension look in the this uh, stress block this is your compression and this is your tension so the distance between this is your nothing but your lever arm that is z so z is equals to d that is your over effective depth minus 0.42 x u your lever arm so these are the formulas for calculating your lever arm for for reinforce under reinforce and other type of problems moment of resistance with respect to concrete that is with respect to compressive force so compressive force into lever arm compressive force is nothing but 0.36 fck b x b x lever arm is your z fck bx bx is nothing but your x is your neutral axis depth b is your width of the beam fck your concrete grade and z is your lever arm for 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 tensile steel uh, for moment resistance with respect to steel is equals to tensile force into lever arm your lever arm is again z tensile force is 0.87 fi at these these are the these are the form these are the values of x u limiting here we can write this as x u limiting for different grade of concrete for f for f y 250 uh, we have the formula for x u limiting as 0.53 d for similarly for point for f e 415 we have x u limiting is equals to 0.48 and for 500 is 0.46 d like x u limiting we have, we also have limiting moment formulae so first we will calculate the limiting moment first we will calculate the moment of resistance compare it with the limiting moment so moment of resistance with respect to concrete we have already discussed the 
force compressive force with respect to concrete the moment is nothing but your compressive force into your lever arm the compressive force is 0.36 fckbx and z is your lever arm z can be denoted as d minus 0.42 xu or xm similarly fmm this is not m limiting this is moment of resistance with respect to steel is 0.87 fckat this is not fck this is fy this formula is written wrong here it is fy ast into your liver arm liver arm is nothing but t minus 0.42 xu are the these are the limiting moment of resistance as far as 456 2000 for fe 250 steel we have this formula 0.1814 fckbd square for 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 fe 450 this is not if this is not 450 there is another mistake here this is 415 fe 450 steel is 0.138 fckbd square and fe 500 is 0.133 fckbd square so you just correct this this is not 450 steel don't have 450 steel we have 415 steel for indian is as per is code for american or british we have some i think 420 we don't have this 450 so please correct this this is not 450 this is 415 steel so these are the formula formula for limiting moment of resistance your moment of resistance should not exceed your limiting values so these limiting values that you are not exceeding the moment so types of problems there are two types of problem in any any type of structure basically the first type is your analysis of section and your second is your design of the section so we'll be doing all these types of problem in the, the, the next lecture we will take a problem by problem lecture so till then I hope you enjoyed this and you understood everything if you are not aware of anything if you didn't get anything you can comment in the comment box we can come up with few le lectures which will be more simpler to make you understand so till then bye take care have a nice day